Hey everybody, this is my 40 gallon waterfall tank and the other day I lost my female flagfish that was in this tank. Not long ago I lost the male and the male had a sort of popped out eye and that can be indicative of a fish that's in water that's too soft for it. And then when the female died the other day I noticed she was sort of puffy and bloated and that can also be indicative of a fish that is in water that's too soft for it. So I looked up the flagfish and despite the fact that I was told that they would do fine in my very very soft water, um, they actually are supposed to be in moderately hard to very hard water. And so I thought I could either talk about shopping at your local fish store versus your big chain pet stores or I could talk about the importance of putting your fish in the proper level of water hardness. And I opted to go with the water hardness because I haven't talked about that topic in quite a while. So why did my fish die being kept in soft water versus being kept in hard water? To explain that, we need to start with osmosis and osmo regulation. So to get everybody on the same page, uh, what osmosis is, is the movement of water to basically balance out salinity. If you have a semi-permeable membrane and you have water on both sides of that membrane and you have let's say salt water or salty water on one side and you have fresh water on the other, what's going to happen is that fresh water is going to move through that membrane to the side that has the more salt in it. You can think about it as the water sort of trying to dilute the saltier side to make it the same salinity on both sides of the membrane. Water always moves from the less dense area to the more dense area. So what osmoregulation is, is this process is happening in the cells of our fish. The cell wall is that semi-permeable membrane and there is a certain specific level of salinity on the inside of that cell wall. Now, depending on what the salinity or what the level of dissolved solids, the hardness, however you want to look at it, um, what that is in the water on the outside is going to determine whether that water tries to move into those cells or water tries to move out of those cells. So if you've got a fish that's a very hard water fish, it's probably got a pretty high concentration of salts inside of its cells and that balances out with the very high concentration of salts in the harder water. So when you put a fish like that in very soft water like this, you've basically got the scenario I just described. You've got very fresh water trying to move in to the very salty water. So your fish's cells are constantly being flooded with water. Now, a lot of different things can happen during this process. The process of osmoregulation is how well your fish deals with that flooding water coming in. How fast can it pump it out? How well adapted is it to pumping it out? Some fish, like my garami in there, can tolerate very soft water or it can tolerate very hard water. It just needs a little bit of time to adapt to it if you, you know, shift it from one to the other. Other fish have to stay in a fairly narrow range of, of hardness, like the flagfish there. Apparently, moderately hard to very hard is where it should have been. So, one thing that can happen if it's a saltwater fish, let's say, we'll go to the extreme. If you've got a marine fish and you put that into fresh water and you've got so much water pumping in, what will happen is you will literally dilute the electrolyte balance within the fish. You'll literally water the fish's body down so much that its cells won't be able to work properly and they will die fairly quickly. You can also even get some of the cells rupturing uh, from so much water flooding into them so quickly they can actually rupture the cell walls. So when you go from an extreme like that you can get a very rapid death. If you go to a less extreme you get a fish that is struggling to keep up and its body is doing its best to pump that water out as fast as it can and its kidneys are working and all the other little mechanisms that I'm not 100% sure about uh, that are involved in the process of getting all of this excess water out 
all of that stuff is working overtime to keep the fish from getting too dilute. You know, the, the, the fish has a certain um, amount of salts and mineral salts and stuff it needs in its cells. And if too much fresh water is rushing in and it dilutes that too much, it knocks the cells out of balance and they don't work properly anymore. And so if you've got a fish like the flagfish in there, I want to say it was probably about a year and a half old. Now, it also said that they only live about a year, uh, anywhere from two to three years is normal for them. So while they weren't old, I'm kind of surprised they lived as long as they did considering how soft my water actually is. But that's what was going on the whole entire time they were in there. Their bodies were struggling to pump out excess water. And that's why you can see the bulged out eye, maybe. That's why the dead female looked kind of bloated and puffy. Um, their kidneys finally gave out, and they couldn't pump the water out fast enough. And it will literally cause swelling. It's similar to what we would think of as edema uh, in we humans. And so if you've got a fish that's supposed to be in very soft water, and you put it in very hard water, the opposite happens. You actually wind up dehydrating the fish. You actually wind up pulling water out of the fish's cells, and the, water's, the fish is working overtime to pump water back in. So I know it sounds weird to think you're dehydrating a fish, but if you've got a fish that needs very soft water and you've got it in hard water, that higher salinity outside the fish is going to actually pull water out of the fish's cells and dehydrate the fish. The same thing happens in plants. That's why it's very difficult to grow plants in hard water and downright impossible unless it's uh, adapted to salt water. You can't grow a plant in salt water unless it's adapted to do that. Um, and that's exactly why you wind up sucking water out of the roots rather than putting water into the roots because it's too salty. So the same thing is going on with the fish. I probably made that a lot more complicated than it needed to be, but that I believe is what was going on with my flag fish there is it needed to be in hard water. It was in soft water and it did the best it could for as long as it could, but its kidneys probably finally gave out and it could no longer deal with the very soft water. Now, having said all of that, I will add that my water is soft, but it is not necessarily electrolyte free. Typically, when you think about zero degrees hardness, you also think about a very, very low total dissolved solid number. And in my case, I have softened water and therefore I replace the calcium and magnesium, which is what gives you hardness. Uh, I replace that with sodium ions. So the sodium ions give me a little bit of buffering for my pH. They also give a little bit of buffer to my fish because they provide some electrolytes in the water. I actually have a total dissolved solid count coming out of my tap somewhere between 150 and 225, generally speaking, depending on the time of year. So I do have stuff in my water, and a lot of that is sodium but I don't have any calcium or magnesium, and that's what accounts for actual hardness. So while my water is, again, zero degrees hardness, it doesn't mean it has zero total dissolved solids, and these fish are swimming around in there with no electrolytes uh, or anything. So that's probably why the flagfish were able to survive as long as they did, and why these fish, like the guppies and even my molly in there, uh, do as well as they do. That might be very soft water for a molly, and they may not thrive in my water, but because of the added sodium in my water, they do okay. So I've said before, I've got really strange water, but it is very soft water. I have no calcium, I have no magnesium or iron or anything like that in there. So I hope I didn't make that way too more confusing than it really needed to be, but that's the long and short, probably more of the long. Uh, but that is it for my discussion about hard water versus soft water and why you should keep your fish in what it's basically supposed to be in. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And then don't forget, of course, this one here is my waterfall tank. So thanks again. We'll see you real soon in the next one.